Hello guys and gals YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Mr. GM Fan. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the John Deere 6000 series. Uh, we're going to give you some specs and then follow up we're going to present you a movie that was created by John Deere to kind of go over some of the features and uh, it's really more of a promotional film so I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. But in 1992, John Deere introduced eight completely redesigned tractor series. Most had four basic models, including the 6000 series. They were designed as a part of John Deere's first truly global series, with many being exported. All of production of the series were based in Mannheim and Baden-Württemberg, Germany, filling the 75 to 125, 120 horsepower branch. Each model sold about 15,000 to 20,000 units. All were upgraded in 1997. They filled the same power band as the 2000 series built by Zetter for John Deere. The difference being that the 6000 series models were made for the international market. The models by Zetter were never exported in large numbers. Most 6000 series models had similar features to the 7000 series that most of you guys are familiar with. The power ratings, uh, the 6100 had a standard PTO and produced approximately 75 horsepower. This was the smallest of the new models until the 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000 series were introduced. The 6200 produced 89 horsepower, 89 horsepower engine with 53 horsepower at the drawbar and 66 horsepower at PTO. The 6300 produced approximately 102 engine horsepower with 75 horsepower at the PTO and 64 horsepower at the drawbar. The 6400 had about 115 engine horsepower and was the biggest tractor ever built in Mannheim until all the models were upgraded in 1996. Well, fellas, meet the finest tractors in the 65 to 85 horsepower class. John Deere 6000 series tractors were made to tackle today's farming challenges, to do better work in less time. Three transmissions let you shift on the go to select optimum working speed for maximum performance and productivity. All right, first part of this video is going to be going over operator comfort. Uh, they're going to talk about the seats, air controls, and instrumentation. Your new John Deere 6000 series tractor is designed with your comfort in mind, whether it's an open station version or comfort guard cab model. Seats are different on open station and comfort guard cab tractors, but the major adjustments are the same. To adjust the height, just lift up on the front of the seat to any of the four positions. You can rotate the seat into position. If your tractor has the optional air suspension seat, its height is adjusted with this control on the left side. To slide the seat forward or back to the desired position, lift the handle on the right side and make your adjustment. The knob at the front of the seat is used to adjust suspension firmness. With the optional air suspension seat, Vertical movement is protected from bottoming out by an all-new ride zone protection system. Suspension firmness is adjusted with this lever. The seat is also equipped with fore and aft attenuation. To release the fore aft attenuation, use this lever. The seat is then free to move forward and back with the motion of the tractor. Flip the lever back to lock out the movement. This control is used to adjust the backrest angle. Lumbar support can be adjusted with this control on the left. And the angle of the armrests can be adjusted to suit any position. Or they can be raised completely out of the way. Fasten your seatbelt. Remember, for maximum protection, you must wear a seat belt whenever operating a tractor equipped with rollover protection. Toward the right rear of the cab, you'll find the air quality system controls. The rocker switch turns the air conditioner on or off. 
there are three rotary switches that control air quality. One adjusts air temperature. Another adjusts air flow to the cab floor, windshield, or blend. And one controls fan speeds. Precise direction control can be achieved by adjusting vent direction and the opening of the vent itself. The steering wheel on both model tractors can be tilted to suit any position you'd like. However, on cab tractors, the steering column can also be telescoped in or out. The instrumentation on the 6000 series tractors is very easy to read. The instrument panel monitors tractor engine and hydraulic functions. If a malfunction should occur, a warning light will illuminate. But if the stop warning light comes on, shut down the tractor immediately. It's warning you that the problem must be corrected before the tractor may be operated. The service alert light indicates the tractor needs attention as soon as possible to ensure continued proper operation. All 6000 series tractors feature two easy to read dials. The left dial shows ground speed. This is a calculated value since it does not take wheel slip into account. As you can see, the fuel gauge is at the bottom of this dial. The right dial is the tachometer showing engine RPM. All 6000 series tractors feature engines that develop constant horsepower between 1840 and 2300 RPM. Operation is recommended anywhere in this range with top horsepower at around 2100 RPM. And as you can see, the engine coolant gauge is at the bottom of this dial. Cab tractors also may be fitted with an optional digital display in the center of the panel. This display will show miles per hour, engine RPM, rear PTO speed, and engine hours. The display can be selected by using the switch found beneath the controls for the windshield wiper. Before starting the engine, always be sure that everyone is clear of the tractor and any implement you may have attached to it. Make sure the transmission is in park. Although it will also start in neutral, we advise using park. If you attempt to start the tractor with the transmission lever in gear, a safety device will prevent the starter from engaging. Make sure the selective control levers are in the neutral position and that the PTO has been disengaged. Set the hand throttle about one-fourth of the way forward, approximately 1200 RPM. Turn the key switch to the first position and check all of the warning lamps. They should glow for about two seconds. During cold weather, a starting aid may be needed. It's a preheater that can be engaged by pushing the key in when it's in the first position. The key should be held in for 30 seconds for proper operation. Now, turn the key switch to engage the starter. Check for warning lights. If a malfunction is indicated, stop the engine and determine the cause. The Synchro Plus transmission has 12 forward and 4 reverse speeds. The speed lever selects any of the three forward speeds, reverse, and the park position. And the range lever is used to select any of the four ranges, A, B, C, or D. The clutch must be depressed for every shift of the Synchro Plus, but the transmission is fully synchronized so that shifts can be made while the tractor is moving. The transmission is in park when the range lever is in neutral and the speed lever is in the park position. To shift the transmission from park, first select the desired range. Then depress the clutch and move the speed lever to the gear you want. Shuttle shifting between forward and reverse while the tractor is moving is possible on the 6000 series. However, the clutch must be depressed first on the Synchro Plus transmission. Don't forget to put the transmission in park before dismounting. The Power Quad transmission has 16 forward 
and 12 reverse gears. Shifts between gears or from forward to reverse can be made without clutching. Shifts between ranges require clutching but are fully synchronized. As with the Synchro Plus, this transmission is also in park when the range lever is in neutral and the speed lever is in the park position. To shift the transmission, select the desired range. For your information, there is no reverse in the D range. Once you've selected a range, move the speed lever to the desired gear. Shuttle shifting between forward and reverse can be done without clutching. The only time the clutch needs to be used is when working in confined areas, such as cattle lots or when hooking up implements. Always put the transmission in park before dismounting. An optional creeper transmission is available for both the Synchro Plus and Power Quad. This allows speeds as low as 13 feet per minute at rated RPM when needed for some specialized operations such as precise cultivation of vegetables. The tractor must be stopped and all systems must be in neutral before you can move the lever to engage the creeper transmission or disengage it to return to normal working speeds. Tractors equipped with mechanical front wheel drive provide increased tractive abilities. So, always use extra caution when using it. Check your operator's manual before using your tractor. To engage the mechanical front wheel drive, depress the rocker switch near the front of the control console. The switch has two positions, off and on. A light on the instrument cluster will indicate when it's engaged. For tight headland turns, simply disengage the mechanical front wheel drive by turning it off. Then re-engage the drive after you've completed the turn. Even tighter turns can be achieved by using the foot brake. Mechanical front wheel drive can be engaged and disengaged in all gears, forward or reverse, during operation and under full load. The differential lock is used when one rear wheel starts to spin. To engage it, depress the foot switch found between the clutch and brake pedal. For maximum safety, disengage the differential lock when it's not needed. This can be done by depressing either brake pedal. When the differential lock is engaged, it makes turning the tractor difficult. Therefore, turning and operating the tractor at high speeds with the differential lock engaged is not recommended. The hitch controller for the 6000 series tractors is an all new design. Operation of the electro hydraulic hitch is convenient and easy to understand. To attach an implement, back the tractor slowly toward it. Keep a careful watch for anyone in the area. Turn the load depth knob counterclockwise until the click detent to place the hitch in position control. This eliminates undesired hitch movements and provides the utmost in safety. The implement is now ready for hookup. This can be done in two different ways, using the hitch control lever or the external remote switch. For tractors equipped with a quick coupler, the lever inside the tractor cab would be used in most cases. To use the quick coupler, make sure the latch control levers are up Raise the hitch until it engages the implement pins in the coupler. Push the latch control levers down to lock the implement to the quick coupler. Make sure they're securely locked. The external remote switch is used when you're outside the cab. Stand to the side and use the switch to slowly raise or lower the hitch until the implement can be secured at each attaching point. To position the draft links, pull the spring-loaded pin and extend the link. Then, once the implement is attached, back the tractor up until the links return to the locked position. The center link is used to level the implement fore and aft. To make the adjustment, disengage the lock and rotate the center portion to lengthen or shorten the link. Then, 
relock the link. Sway blocks are used to limit the side to side movement of the implement during transport. To install them, remove the blocks from the storage position. Mount them using the pin and retaining clip. The raise limit on the 6000 series tractors is set by using the rotary knob found under the rear cover of the hitch controller. When fully clockwise, the hitch can be raised to the maximum height. When fully counterclockwise, the upper height is limited to half of full hitch travel. When setting the raise limit, be sure to check the implement to ground or crop clearance. The selected raise limit will be the highest position that either the hitch control lever or up-down rocker switch will allow. Also under this cover is the rate of drop adjustment. Turn it clockwise to increase or counterclockwise to decrease the rate of drop. Obviously, the rock shaft will drop faster with heavy implements attached. Fully lowering the implement should take at least two seconds. Excessive drop speed may cause damage or injury. In the field, it's likely that adjustments of the low depth mix will be desired. This control varies the mix of position and draft control. Rotating the knob will either increase or reduce draft response. The setting chosen will depend on soil and terrain variation as well as the implement being used lower the implement into the ground to the desired depth. Now set the stop on the hitch controller by rotating the finger dial. Operating the hitch in the lowest possible position will prevent the draft sensing from working at its optimum efficiency. You'll get correct operation if the hitch control lever is brought back until there is visible movement in the hitch. Use the up-down switch on the hitch controller to raise and lower the hitch when making headland turns. And of course, always have the hitch lever in the locked raised position when transporting. In many respects, the basic design concept of the John Deere pressure and flow hydraulic system remains the same as it has been for 30 years on John Deere tractors. However, there are several improvements in the design of the components that make today's hydraulic system easier to operate and more efficient. When hooking up a hydraulic hose, just push it into the coupler. To remove the hose, simply pull it out. Hooking up or removing the hydraulic hose can be easily done, even when there's pressure in the hose. The detent adjust knobs can be reached, while seated in the cab, by opening the rear window. There are two different types of selective control valves offered on the 6000 series, the standard valve and the optional deluxe model. There are two valve positions on the standard SCV, no detent and continuous detent. No detent would be used for loader or similar applications, while continuous detent would be used for hydraulic motors or applications where continuous flow would be required. In addition to no detent and continuous detent, the deluxe SCV also has automatic detent, this feature allows automatic kickout when a cylinder reaches the end of its stroke. Also within easy reach of the seat are the controls used to make rate of flow adjustments. The flow rate knob on the standard SCV has 180 degrees of adjustment from minimum to maximum flow. On the other hand, the deluxe SCV rotates through three and one half turns, making adjustments considerably more precise. Thank you. 
Adjusting the tread setting on tractors with rear cast wheels is a simple job thanks to a rack and pinion axle. Loosen the sleeve retaining bolts and move the wheel into position. Making tread adjustments on tractors with steel rear wheels and flanged axles, as well as models with mechanical front wheel drive, requires removal of the rims. The tread width can then be adjusted by changing the offset of the dish from the outside to the inside. The eight position wheel can also be moved from one side of the tractor to the other. Always check the operator's manual when making tread adjustments to make sure the front fenders are in the correct position and the right adjustment is made to the steering stops to prevent damage to the tractor or tire. Correct implement selection and ballasting is the most important thing you can do to obtain maximum productivity. They directly affect the tractor's performance and efficiency in the field. Once the implement has been selected, add only enough weight to get the right amount of wheel slip. The correct amount of wheel slip is 8 to 12 percent for mechanical front wheel drive tractors and 10 to 15 percent for two wheel drive tractors. It's not only important to have the tractor weighted properly, but the weight must also be in the right place. Weight distribution splits on mechanical front wheel drive tractors should be 40% front and 60% rear. On two wheel drive tractors, the weight splits should be as shown here. After the tractor has been weighted properly, check all tire inflation pressures. Our tractors are all shipped with the maximum suggested inflation pressure for stability on trucks or trains during shipment. Using the tire manufacturer's inflation guide, reduce the pressures to the minimums that match the weight of the tractor and the anticipated load. Lower inflation pressures create a larger tire footprint, improve traction, and give a better ride. Remember, when ballasting a tractor, use the optimum weight and tire inflation pressure to get the correct percentage of wheel slip. Proper ballasting and correct inflation pressures, the key to increasing your tractor's performance and efficiency. This is the PTO Engage Disengage Control. The PTO is engaged by lifting the knob and twisting it clockwise. When the PTO is engaged, the indicator light will come on. You can then select the speed readout on the optional digital display. To disengage the PTO, you can either turn the knob counterclockwise or simply push down on it. If your 6000 series tractor is fitted with the optional 540 and 1000 RPM PTO, then the PTO shaft is located in a dry compartment. This means no oil will leak out when changing the shaft. To change the PTO from 540 to 1000 RPM, remove the snap ring and pull the shaft out. Then rotate the shaft end for end, reinsert it, and secure it with the snap ring. To adjust the drawbar length, first remove the pin. Slide the drawbar to the desired position, replace the pin, and retorque. To position the drawbar from side to side, remove the locking pin. Slide the drawbar to the desired position and replace the pin. Implement safety chains should always be attached to the tractor, never to the drawbar. Attaching them to the drawbar could break the pin and cause the implement to come loose. The 6000 series Comfort Guard cab provides three locations for monitor mounting. Installation is easy. 
simply remove the protective cap from the threaded bosses and bolt up the bracket and monitor. You can swing the bracket out of the way when the monitor isn't needed. A monitor mount is also available for open station tractors. There are two grommets covering openings in the rear of the cab. These can be easily removed for wiring harness installation to an implement. The grommets can be cut to fit a particular harness and then should stay with that harness. New grommets can be purchased from your dealership to cover the access hole after the implement harness is removed. An electrical convenience outlet is located at the rear of the right-hand console. These three-pin connectors supply ground, live 12 volts, and key switch 12 volts. Additional convenience outlets can be easily added. All daily maintenance, including fuel fill, can be performed from the ground on 6,000 series tractors. The engine oil level should be checked daily. Both check and fill are made at this convenient location. Hydraulic oil level is easily checked with the dipstick on the rear of the tractor. To open the hood, Lift up this handle on the right side of the engine. The hood can then be raised to this position. If required, the hood can be raised even higher by releasing this latch. Coolant level can be checked at the expansion tank. The engine air filter should only be cleaned when needed. A light on the instrument panel will indicate when the filter has become restricted. If the warning light indicates the air filter needs cleaning, use this latch to release the canister. Then lift out the filter element. Cleaning the filter more frequently will not provide cleaner air to the engine. In some cases, frequent cleaning could even damage the filter and let dirt and dust get into the engine resulting in severe engine damage. Refer to your operator's manual for cleaning and replacement instructions. To access the radiator if cleaning is required, depress this latch to quickly and easily open the side shields. Clean debris from the radiator and side screens to make sure there's a good supply of air. To access the battery, the front grill should be lifted and then removed. Check the battery for loose cables and proper fluid levels. Closing the hood is simple. Just pull it down and then push down on the front to latch it. The handle will automatically reset to the closed position. Cab air filters can be removed from ground level at the rear of the tractor without the use of any tools. Check tires for excessive wear, brakes, or cuts. Check inflation pressures once a week. Remember, proper servicing is just as important as proper operation to the productivity, safety, and reliability of your 6000 series tractor. This video program has been intended to enhance your operator's manual and your overall understanding of this tractor. Please thoroughly review the manual before operating or servicing your tractor. John Deere 6000 Series Tractors, the new breed of power.